हेलो गाइस और वेलकम बैक टू डॉक्टर दिया द पैथोलॉजी एजुकेटर एंड एकेडमी सो मैं कंसल्टेंट मॉलिकुलर पैथोलॉजिस्ट आई एम वर्किंग इन चेन्नई एंड दिस पैथोलॉजी नगेट्स इट्स आर केस डिस्कशन फॉर पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट्स वेयर वी आर गोइंग टू सी टाइनी टाइनी लिटिल बिट ऑफ बिट्स एंड पीस ऑफ केसेस फ्रॉम टुडे टिल द एंड ऑफ दिस मंथ आई विल ट्राई टू अप्रोच डिफरेंट केसेस फ्रॉम हिस्टोमोफोलॉजी पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू वी लुक एट द इम्यूनो हिस्टो केमिस्ट्री वी लुक एट द डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोसिस and I look at the text from standard textbooks like who predominantly right so because these case series will be ex- extremely useful for people who are going to give this exam in this coming um, academic year so if you're a final year post graduate this will definitely help you a lot and since you're going to see real time cases than from images from the textbooks we can easily see the high power low power image and everything and also few of them if required i see also will be present fine and we have started a series of discussions for postgraduate lectures at an, an academy in the app do download the app you'll have the the link below in the de- video description and you have completed cervix we have completed endometrium and you have completed lymphomas mostly we are done with b and t cell lymphomas we have few of the leukemias left for to complete hematology we'll go system by system and all of these will be special classes you can attend whenever you have and if you can be available at the time of the discussion you can have doubts clarified you can have the lecture notes you can download it anytime you can view them in the laptop or the desktop fine and if you are a part of the telegram group i hope you must have getting the links if you're not part of the telegram group do search pathology parents they are for post graduates and you can join in the telegram group where you'll see frequent discussion of cases and also all the links related to post graduate lectures will be provided there fine so now today we'll go on to this today's first case here i'm going to have a 12 year old lesion with a tbi in the tbi Right, so I'm going to discuss from the clinical history perspective what all could be a differential diagnosis. See, it's a very very vague history. A 12-year-old lesion with a tibial history, it could be as innocuous as something as a simple bone cyst. It could be easily a simple bone cyst. It could be also an osteosarcoma, which also is going to come in the same age group. It could be an aneurysmal bone cyst. It could be fibrous dysplasia. It could be any defects, right? is a very long history just with a very long differential diagnosis list just with this history available one thing which I, all of you, all of the pathologists listening to this should remember is don't interpret any bone biopsies without a proper radiologist opinion that's very very important preferably from an msk radiologist because radiology is very very important especially in few cases the diagnosis is almost certain in radiology and it will make our life much more easier to give a differential diagnosis right it's the first thing i want all of you to listen to it okay now with the preliminary history of 12 year old tibia lesion with an endless list of possibilities of differential diagnosis we'll go and have a look at the microscopy right so again i have three or four couple of images we're going to describe try to describe them so when you look at this image what i'm seeing is i'm seeing predominantly a lesion this solid right almost it's entirely solid lesion In the center obviously i'm seeing a lesion which is having a cystic area a place of destruction it could be a cyst or it could be an artifactual separation as well in this image i'm sure that you will also accept that i'm not seeing any areas of hemorrhage as such it's predominantly solid area and if i look here what is striking for me here is the fibroblast look at the fibroblast or the fibroblast or any spindle shaped cell the pattern is striking for me here it goes like this it goes like this it goes like this it goes like this it's kind of an like a pattern which is like a v this pattern is called a story form appearance the story form appearance of spindle shaped cell is the most important thing at least from this image we we'll look at few more images if there's any more interesting finding there we'll add to it right so first in this image is predominantly solid lesion no not much of hemorrhage areas not much of solid cystic areas and it's predominantly spindle shaped cells with a story form appearance right for the next image this is a hyper image what i can see is i can see a couple of blood vessels here nothing much this again a blood vessel a little bit more blood vessels same spindle shaped cell you can see them it's like a sweeping fascicle it's like a sweeping fascicle of a story form appearance one thing though it's not much of a higher power my may 20x image what i can say is there is not much of a pleomorphism or a dysplasia if you look at them it's very spindled out thin monomorphic not much of pleomorphism no mitosis as such no necrosis at least in this area right we'll have a look at quite a few areas 
again it's 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 a very very condensed thing again look at the appearance look at the appearance it just goes it's just like a sweeping by cycles if you look at this here here one goes here one goes here one goes it's it's a story form appearance classical story form appearance not only that i'll just try to erase all those things see when you look at the appearance apart from the story form nature if you look at that what i can see is uh, maybe an artifactual area with a little bit of plasma fluid stuck there and i can see a giant cell you can see a giant cell though the number of giant cells is not so prominent i can see definitely classical giant cells stuck here and there distributed randomly in the lesion it is not concentrated around the cyst it's not uniformly distributed as well because in the previous image i didn't see them i have a couple of more images we'll have a look at them again a perfectly spindle out cell kind of the tapering side of the which gives a classical fibroblastic look right I don't have any osteoid formation as of now. We didn't see any bony areas. It's just the fibroblastic nature of the thing. Again, lots of vascularity is there. I do s no mitosis, no mitosis, no pleomorphism, no necrosis as of now. Right? The last image. What's most striking here is, though I didn't have any area of your uh, hemorrhage, what is striking here is look at these cells. I'm sure you'll accept as well. Seeing lots and lots of hemostriated bladder macrophages, right? There are lots and lots of hemostriated bladder macrophages. I didn't have any hemorrhage here. Any cyst-like spaces was filled with hemorrhage or just hemorrhage inside the uh, fibroblastic lesion. But I do have lots of hemostriated bladder macrophages. Here in these areas, the fibroblasts also look a little bit plumper compared to the previous images, right? So these are the things I'm going to have. I'm going to summarize whatever finding we saw here. It's a 12 year old person, okay, with a TBR lesion. I'm seeing predominantly a solid lesion comprised of fibroblast in a story form appearance. These fibroblasts are monomorphic, it's not pleomorphic, not much of mitosis, no necrosis, no cystic areas, no hemorrhage. What I'm seeing is hemostriated ladder macrophages. I'll come to a differential diagnosis or maybe a diagnosis. The first diagnosis for me is I forgot the scattered uh, Jain cell as well, right? The first diagnosis for us is it's a non-ossifying fibroma, right? That's my first and the preliminary diagnosis just based on the appearance. My diagnosis here was also non-ossifying fibroma. We did report as a non-ossifying fibroma. We look at the findings of non-ossifying fibroma and also kind of we look at the differential diagnosis in relation with non-ossifying fibroma. How can I rule out the other possibilities, right? So what I'll see in non-ossifying fibroma is again all these experts are from WHO. Whatever is there, whatever we were seeing, the differential diagnosis, the classical differences. My base book for all this teaching is going to be either the standard text or foundations of pathology are very good for you to differential diagnose. So if you have any doubts in any of the cases to attend the differential diagnosis, I would say go and have a look at foundations of pathology. It's a very, very good collection. Right? Age. It should be a skeletally immature individual. That's very, very important. My age fits here. It's a 12 year old. Skeletal maturation has never happened. If skeletal maturation happens, non ossifying fibroma, the other name is fibrocortical defect. It's not going to happen. Ossifying non ossifying fibroma, every cortical defect dysplasia happens much before skeletal maturity, right? So, what is described in WHO for non ossifying fibroma is it's composed of bland spindle shaped cells. That's what we saw. This is very, very important story form growth pattern. We appreciated the story form growth pattern almost in every image. It's a sweeping fascicle like this. This is how a story form growth pattern goes like, right? It'll be like sweeping fascicles. Going all through together, you might not see the entire wheel like appearance, but if you see fascicles interlacing fascicles like sweeping pattern, that's a story form pattern. I can see an osteoclast in cells scattered throughout the lesion, though it says scattered throughout the lesion, at least in this biopsy, whatever we saw, it is not much scattered. It was very few, couple of them, that's all. I didn't have much of them. Reactive changes can be seen. This word kind of confuses in the last image, right? I had lots of hemostrin deposits and hemostrin and macrophages. It need not be having an hemorrhagic area. Why I'm stressing on that is, when you have a reactive bone, uh, hemostrin and macrophages, don't jump to a diagnosis of an aneurysmal bone cyst. Need not be there. Aneurysmal bone cyst is a very, very characteristic finding. We look them in the differential diagnosis, right? First, there was no cyst to call an aneurysmal bone cyst, right? It could be in solid ABC. We'll just have a look at it, right? Reactive open bone formation can also be there. Cystic change can also be there. We did see the cystic changes which was definitely focal. We didn't have reactive own bone formation. So it's a non-ossifying fibroma. Can necrosis be there? It can also be there. So if you see foci of necrosis, without ATPR, without pleomorphism, without your mitosis, 
See, that's just a growth induced, a damage induced necrosis. It is not a tumor cell necrosis. Don't again report an high grade tumor. Rare instances, necrosis can also be seen in case of a non osmic fibroma. Fine. Now let's come to a different cell diagnosis. It's a spindle shaped lesion with giant cells. We have like an entire list of different cell diagnosis for a giant cell tumor, right? So, first thing what I want to think of is the giant cell tumor per se. GCTs, the stromal cells. The first thing is it's not GCT. One age is unlikely. Second, I never saw giant cells. Except for an image, couple of them, there are no giant cells. In a GCT, giant cells is the most important finding. It, you, you know, it's not required for research for it. It will be dispersed throughout the um, tumor, right? The uniform distribution of osteoclastic giant cell is the most important finding there. If non ossifying fibroma has a little bit more giant cells than what we saw in this case, then I might consider a difficult possibility to rule out giant CT, right? In that case, what I'm going to do is I want you to look at the monomorphic cells. In a GCT, like you see in this image, you can see the monomorphic cells are not flat, right? They're definitely plump. A little bit plump and an oval monomorphic cells. What we saw was in fibroblastic nature, extremely spindle load cell. non ossifying fibroma will have a fibroblastic nature of a spindle shaped cell, and your GCT will have lots of plump oval uh, pleomorphic uh, your mononucleases, right? This is very, very important to differentiate. Again, radiology will give you an absolute clue with an X-ray finding of an insoluble lesion starting from that. You can have an MRI findings as well. You will have lots and lots of solid tumor with abundant giant cell distribution and each and every giant cell have like 30-40 nuclei. That is classical for the GCT. That's not a differential diagnosis here. Even if you confuse it with the mononuclear cell, I can easily differentiate the fibroblastic nature in non ossifying fibroma and the plump nature in your GCT. Fine. Second. Second for me here is ABC. As I said that an classical aneurysmal bones is not a differential diagnosis here. Because I said that any classical aneurysmal bones have areas of hemorrhage. There are lots of areas of hemorrhage. That's one. Plus, when you look at the aneurysmal bones, they do have lots of giant cells. And most of the giant cells will be concentrated surrounding the areas of hemorrhage. If you have an aneurysmal bones, that's how the giant cell distribution will be. This is very important. This might help you sometimes to differentiate ABC from ossifying fibromas or non ossifying fibromas. That's one important thing. Where I might have a confusion is in solid ABCs. Because in solid ABCs, I don't see this. It will be almost like what we saw in this image, right? The difference is ABC shows often reactive bone formation within this tumor and the pattern is not prominent. That's why I want you to concentrate more and more about the pattern. The fibroblastic nature and the story form appearance is almost in favor of my non ossing fibroma. Even a solid ABC where I don't have areas of hemorrhage and I don't have much of a giant cell, I should not have story form pattern if it's a solid and visible bone cyst. I do see a little bit more giant cells than what we saw in this case, but story form pattern is more important for me to differentiate. And obviously, I said that radiology. Radiology plays a major role. This has to be differentiated because especially these metaphyseal defects are more common in fibulas as well uh, or in alna where tiny bones when it happens in a fibula for a non-ossifying fibroma i don't want to do anything extra that's more than enough for me it's a tumor you take a biopsy you remove that it automatically settles it's not a neoplasm it's just a defect fibrocortical defect i don't want to do anything the biopsy itself is treat treatment like your aneurysmal like any simple bone cyst right but if it's an aneurysmal bone cyst, either I have to cure it, I have to do a surgery, intervene the um, lesion, I have to remove it because they are locally aggressive. They might weaken, they might grow. Fibrocortical defect doesn't do that. So there's a very drastic change in management. Especially if I have an ABC in a fibula-like bone, you have to remove the entire fibula. Because you can't screw, you can't just drill a few uh, particles in the fibula because they are very, very narrow, right? So my diagnosis makes a huge impact in the management of the patient. So if you have at any point of time difference of opinion from the radiologist perspective and a pathologist perspective, I would say please go for a tumor board meeting. You have to do that and then only come to a complete diagnosis, right? The third differential diagnosis for me is fibrous dysplasia. That's also very common, right? So fibrous dysplasia, one thing what we will appreciate in a classical fibrous dysplasia, you can see in this image as well, 
Or this one, right? The Chinese letter pattern appears. A C-shaped, S-shaped, curvilinear trabeclase. Non-ossifying fibroma will never have a trabeclase. Even if it's there, few overbone formation, I won't have this curvilinear trabeclase. But the spindle says what I'm seeing in between the trabeclase is almost similar to a fibrous dysplasia. That's almost similar to fibrous dysplasia and an also non ossifying fibroma. A bland, spindle out thin cells which is fibroblastic in nature. But main important finding for me is the trabeculae, right? Multinuclear genesis can be seen here, which can also be seen in non ossifying fibroma. Same goes with histiocytes and for me macrophages. Here I won't see them commonly, but non ossifying fibroma, I do see them a little bit in more, right? So fibrous dysplasia is a spotter. Most of you must have seen them. So maybe a very remote differential diagnosis for non ossifying fibroma, but it's not the first diagnosis, differential diagnosis for non ossifying fibroma, fine. Okay, so that ends today's discussion. So what we saw was just to sum up whatever we saw, we saw a 12 year old tibial lesion. The pointers, the findings were a perfectly spindle shaped, bland spindle shaped fibroblast lesion with a story form pattern with very, very minimal atypia, no mitotic figures, no necrosis, no cyst formation, no bone formation. We came to non ossifying fibroma. We saw the differential diagnosis of GCT, an aneurysmal bone cyst and fibrous dysplasia and its importance, fine. Okay, that's all in today's discussion. Hope to see you soon in one more video of pathology nuggets. So we're going to have tiny bits of case discussion here and we have already completed close to 15, 16 cases. If you have missed any one of them, you can go to my playlist. You will be having titles of pathology nuggets. All of these are for postgraduates. And as I said in the start, we have a lecture series going on for postgraduates for at the Academy app. All of them are free, special classes. It's to us for us to learn together and grow together more, right? So if you're a part of the Telegram group, join there where you'll have all the links given for you for the class. At the same time, if you have not downloaded an academy app, you can download the Anacademy app and enroll to all, any of these special classes. You can use Pathocops as a code if it's asking for, fine. Thank you for your time. See you soon in one more video. Till then, bye-bye from Dr. Anjit. Bye-bye. Thank you.